Ellis Wong, great to have you back in Hong Kong. First of all, how excited are you to be back in Hong Kong now as an apprentice jockey? I'm very excited to come back to Hong Kong. To why, uh, to why, to raise why. That's my dream, and yeah, um, that's my dream, and yeah, I try the best. I'm really happy for that. Ellis, I guess when you joined the apprentice school um, all those years ago, you've obviously had your experience now down in Australia. You must have been really excited to sort of get back here and, and what Hong Kong racing represents. Obviously, this is a, a huge stage to be to be riding on. So great for you to, to come back with that experience in Australia. Uh, yeah, Hong Kong is really uh, top level in the racing in the world. Uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot in Australia, so I started zero, so everything, like jump the horse, like travel the horse, like pushing, use the whip, everything, yeah, got a great experience. You're joining Casper Founds. Um, you mentioned earlier on that Vincent Ho is, is a bit of a, an idol of yours, somebody you'd like to try and um, emulate. How, how important is it for you to join a stable like Mr. Founds? Obviously, he's a, a big, successful trainer. There should be plenty of opportunities for you. Yeah, I, I'm really lucky to can follow um, Kasper, and he is a really good trainer. And Vincent Ho, I, he's my model, and he do everything good and professional so I try to try to you know what in role and do what he's doing just try to learn him you've got one ride on Sunday your first ride in Hong Kong is is on a horse for, for your master in the shape of Kahola Angel I know you probably don't know too much about the horse but he looks like an exciting ride given that he's had one race one win and you're able to to claim 10 pounds off him you must be excited to to ride what looks to be a, a smart horse yeah, he gave me a really good ride, and yeah, I'm excited too, but I just don't think too much and try my best. David Hayes, uh, you've got a couple of runners in race seven coming up on, on Sunday afternoon, um, a 1,200 metre sprint race, the class two. Um, let's start with your top weight nervous witness. Um, you've stripped all the headgear off him this time, right? Yeah, he's been missing the start the last couple of runs, and I think he's been resenting the crossover. Mm. So I hope that's the case, because he's a leader, and when leaders uh, miss the start, it's pretty fatal, and, that, and that's what's happened his last... So if you're prepared to bet that uh, he jumps well, yeah. he'll be a totally different horse on the weekend. He's had that trial since. Very impressive. He always has been quite impressive in his trials, but that was obviously minus headgear. What was Lyle Hewitson's report on that performance? Yeah, he thought he was very good. Yeah. Uh, it was visually good. Um, there was a lot of speed in it. He didn't lead, which was a bit of a surprise. And he quickened up quite nicely without trying too hard. So. Just showed that he's on song, um, providing he tidies up his, his gate work. If we go back to his run three starts ago and third to, to Duke Wai, I mean, that certainly gives him very solid claims now that he's got down to, to double figures. Yes, he, he um, I think he's a triple digit horse, yeah. uh, and, and it's just a matter of time till he gets back there. He's proven that though, hasn't he? Yes. I mean, yeah. um, your other runner is Oriental Smoke. Now, we saw a bit more from him last time, didn't we? Yeah, I think the key to this horse in upper class is good barriers. Yeah. When he gets a good barrier, he puts himself in a good spot and he'll run well. Uh, it's, it's not a terrible barrier, but I prefer him to draw in, a bit more in. Yeah, he's improved 18 pounds this season, David. He's had a good season. Was your hand forced a little bit with, with booking Angus Chung to take that seven pounds off? I, I just thought get a bit of weight relief. Yeah. Um, he, he's, uh, he's probably at his mark yeah. and needs everything to, in his favour to win in this class. He's had a busy campaign there, hasn't he? I mean, a three-time winner from 10 this season, certainly not bad going. Yeah, and, and, and look, apart from um, just recently, always in the money. I think he's won yeah. four and a half million this year, so he's been pretty good. Yeah, he's done a super job. And, and your horses are doing a great job as well. They've, they've certainly um, certainly showing their hand of late. I thought Lucky Encounter was quite quite impressive there recently. For really happy with him. He, uh, he's a horse that I think's got a lot of upside. Mm -hmm. um, he sat off the pace and finished strongly and won pretty well. So uh, more to come, we hope. Let's chat about your, your trio of runners. Let's start with, with Senor Toba, obviously. He himself was the winner of this race 12 months ago. What's your overall assessment of his Middle Eastern adventure? I guess, ideally, you would have hoped for a bit better. Oh, yeah, a lot better, actually. But, you know, he was plagued with some internal issues over there. And hopefully that's behind us now. His form prior to leaving 
Hong Kong was very good, winning the 1800. He looked strong through the line. And now he's back here at Sha Tin. And, uh, you know, obviously he's carrying 134. Uh, but we'd be hoping for him to bounce back and, uh, and show us what his true form is. These are his type of races, aren't they, Casper? Yeah. I mean, when you look at targets for a horse like Senor Toba, I guess this month encompasses what you aim for with a horse like him. 100% right, yeah. That's what we'd be looking at these next two races. And, and hopefully he's there to pick up some nice prize money for us. I thought probably one of your most interesting runners in the race, now you've got the three of them, but perhaps one of the more interesting is Columbus County. Now, I know he's a bit of a favourite amongst the stable. He's never actually won this distance, but some of his placed efforts, notably in a champion and chaser and a Hong Kong vase, have been very good if you get yeah, into his form. Yeah, 100% right. Look, he's, he's the dark horse coming in off 120. He's got a nice galloping weight. Um, he's got a fresh pair of legs. Um, he could give a little bit of cheek in this race, you know, and um, like I said, he looks a treat. Um, there's quite a bit of depth in this race. It's, it's a race that's obviously got a lot of com competition in it. So we'll be certainly respecting our competitors and uh, we're hopeful with a three-pronged uh, attack that we can uh, get a winning result with one of them. I guess that the winning result may well come from your lightly raced horse that you've, you've now inherited in the shape of straight Aaron, obviously. Um, uh, let's go back to his derby. Um, I know, you know, I've read on record that if you go back and have the race again, you think he might have got that bit closer. I don't think I know he would have. I mean, we've proven that the few weeks later coming out and spanking the horse that obviously should have won the derby, in, you know, in a sword point, whatever it's called. He looked like he was unlucky as well, but, you know, he had, his, he had the opportunity of doing that. We didn't, we were just stuck on the inside and it's not the place to be on this horse. Um, he's pretty electric when he uh, gets a bit of room. And obviously we'll be hoping that we've stepped him up in distance this time, 2,400. It's a little bit of a risk factor, but the horse has come out of his race as well. He presents well, and uh, I normally wouldn't run a horse out of the ratings and also put overweight on one unless I think his true rating isn't there yet. And I believe he's a horse that's going to be well into the triple figures going forward. So we, we've thrown him in here, you know, and then we're hopeful that if he runs the distance out, he'll certainly make his presence felt. Jamie, Red Elegance is arguably probably one of the most ex exciting horses on the programme outside of the group race this Sunday. Um, mightily impressive debut from him and, and back to the races he will go for his second start. Yeah, he's, he's in good order. He, he won well first up. He'd uh, been trialling well before that, but probably the ease of the victory was a, was a little bit of a surprise, but a pleasant surprise all the same. So uh, he seems to have come through it well. He's had a nice little maintenance trial since. and. Um, heads back to the races in good shape. You more than anyone would have, uh, I suppose, enjoyed seeing Lucky Encounter win as well. Um, he was good uh, yeah, exactly. next time out. Yeah, for sure. That uh, always gives you a bit more confidence when the horse that places comes out and wins impressively on the big day. So hopefully that bodes well for him. He's had a trial since, uh, Jamie. Um, what was the, the report from Luke Curry regarding his, his trial? Yeah, just a nice maintenance trial. He's not the, he's not the best around a corner just yet. He, uh, it's a little bit lost, so that's why he's sort of been down the straight and down the straight again. Um, but yeah, just maintenance, build, building fitness or maintaining fitness mm. and happy with him. Did you just put that down to, to an experience with him, the, the fact that he probably hasn't quite grasped that, that track now just yet? He's got a sort of short, sharp sort of action. He doesn't have a great length of stride just yet, but um, he came out of Melbourne uh, obviously going the other way around. He's come, come here to Sharton and going the Sydney way, which has um, just taken a, a little bit of time to get used to, but he, he, he will get there. Um, but he's, he's a nice horse and he's going to have to be on, on Sunday. It's a uh, you know, pretty pretty good field. Uh, Dennis Ship's horse is going well and there's a couple of young up and coming horses in there. So uh, never easy to be handicapped 10 and um, up into class three for a second start. We'll get a good line on him and, and how he's going. Yeah, it's a bit of a standout as well when you've got uh, Zach Purton carded to do 117, but I imagine there might be a pound or two over there as well. Yeah, it'll be a plus a couple, but 119 uh, is, is, is worth the, is worth the uh, little bit extra. Yeah, certainly better to have him on your side than not, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. He knows the horse well, and um, hopefully the horse will run well again. Hugh, Mighty Stride is your ride in the last race on Sunday afternoon. Um, he's doing a very good job, this horse, isn't he? He is. He was, he's got an impressive record. He's an impressive looking horse and he gives you a very good feel and he's got the advantage of barrier one. Although he is a horse that seems to race better with a little bit of room. So mm. whether that is in fact an advantage, we'll have to wait and see. But a uh, nice progressive horse. I think he meets probably the strongest field that he has done to date. Um, insane, all that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where he fits in. You mentioned he probably appreciates a bit of room. He's, he's a big chap as well, isn't he? He's a big horse with a big stride. And yeah. 
takes a little bit of time to get organised and he needs room to do that. So hence the description of wondering whether Barry One yeah. is ideal. But look, he, he's a very sensible horse and if he's travelling well enough, I'm sure I'll be able to find that room. And, and if I can do that comfortably, he should balance up and hit the line really well. A couple of notes on form. You mentioned obviously being you know, some decent opposition. You've got a fairly good handle on some of them. Viva Chaleur and Majestic Colour, just a couple. So um, with all that in mind, who do you sort of think is his biggest rival in this race? I mean, amazing victories, another horse in form. Yes, well, uh, uh, there is a bit of depth to the field, but the interesting runner for me in particular is Viva Chaleur. Mm. Uh, I, I just think he's a really nice horse who was trained on a derby path and just was simply too far for him. So we just didn't see him deliver on what I think he's capable of. So I'm as interested as everyone else to see how he performs back in trip after a bit of a let up. And uh, Majestic Colour, another horse who I've had a bit to do with, um, you know, he has had a more recent run, so he, he might be jogging on the spot ready to capitalise. He's drawn well, he's a bit of a go forward horse, so uh, he might be one I can follow into the straight if, if circumstances prevail. I know it's not your domain, Chung Fa, but he, he does tend to have uh, his breaks up there um, soon after he races. He has won a trial up there as well, so I guess just that confirmation of his well-being is certainly another plus. Yeah, look, I'm not too worried about his preparation. He, he's, like I said, he's a straightforward horse. He's very sensible and, you know, I can see, you know, I'll be surprised if he hasn't improved somewhat since his last run. So, you know, he's well managed going into his recent runs and there's no reason to think this one will be any different. One horse that has improved here is Nordic Dragon. Good to see him win again on, on Wednesday night. He really does look like he's improving nicely. Yes, Nick, I was really impressed with his last 100 metres. I mean, as you pointed out, I was sort of hands and heels into the line he, his previous victory, but I had to ask for a little more effort this time and the response was very encouraging. So he had the top weight and, you know, it's a, I haven't had a horse let down with that underneath me with the 135 in post, so... Up in class and down in weight, I think you'll see him perform well again uh, at his next start, whenever that might be. So, nice progressive horse and looking forward to him developing.